Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today, we are rebuilding the Arizona Cardinals in a realistic manner. They have been one of the worst teams in the entire NFL this year. Of course, right up there with the Raiders. Right up there with the 49ers, Giants. The, you know, the Giants have started to get better recently uh, in the win department. But we're not going to worry about them. We're going to worry about the Arizona Cardinals. The progression of rookie quarterback Josh Rosen. But let's just go ahead and digest the entire team at once. So, of course, we're taking over in week 15. Cardinals are 3-10. and 10, Not really going too, uh, too great for this squad. But... This is the full non-injured team coming back in, and that would be from left to right in the offensive line. DJ Humphreys, Micah Potty, AQ Shipley, Justin Pugh, who was recently signed in free agency from the Giants, and Joe Barksdale. Um, a lot of these guys are not what I would consider to be usable for the future. Justin Pugh is up close to 30 now. He's 28, only a 77 overall. Quick development probably won't be enough to keep him in there. DJ Humphreys is the only one we're like, maybe, because he's 24 with quick development. And it, you know, even though he's only 76 overall, it's easier to upgrade him. So we might be able to use him at like Ray Tackle or something. I don't know. Jermaine Gresham and Ricky Seals Jones is not a good duo at tight end. Got to get a lot better with that. This might be the worst offense in the NFL by far. Larry Fitzgerald has obviously been great in the league, but he is super old now at 35 years old. We're going to have to um, look to get better at receiver. Christian Kirk is obviously a step in the right direction as he is super young. Rookie out of Texas A&M. Hopefully we'll be able to make him really good over the course of this thing. Uh, but there really isn't much here at wide receiver at all. Chad Williams is 23. Not particularly good at all. J.J. Nelson still on the team. He's not particularly good. And then the backfield. Derek Coleman is deaf, which is pretty cool that he's even in the NFL. Uh, and then, of course, David Johnson, who's pretty good. We'll probably keep him at running back. And then TJ Logan, Chase Edmonds, uh, we're fine there. But really, the focal point of this rebuild will be Josh Rosen, the rookie out of UCLA. We have a good base to build around in him. Decent throw power, decent throw accuracy. He's a decent enough quarterback in a really, really bad situation. We'll see if we can make that a lot better. And then on the defensive side of the ball... We have an interesting group. Trey Boston, who I think is on a one-year deal. We're going to look to probably retain him. And then Antoine Bethea is super old at this point. He's 34. Hassan Reddick, Josh Bynes, Daniel Buchanan. I like all those guys. They really love these money backers. Jeremy Cash played safety at Duke. Hassan Reddick is another hybrid player from Temple. He played outside linebacker, edge. He came into Temple as a safety recruit. Uh, played a lot of linebacker. He's a weird player. Dayon Buchanan was a safety at Washington State. Ended up being a, a pretty high pick and then got moved to linebacker, that money backer position. And then Josh Bynes, I don't really know what his deal is, or Gerald Hodges, or Thurston Armbrister. Is it Thurston? Yeah, it is. It doesn't matter. We're going to look to replace a lot of these guys. The only position where I think we're perfect is cornerback because we have Patrick Peterson, Buda Baker. Look to get a better nickel guy that isn't David Amerson. Buda Baker, we can move to strong safety where he's probably going to be a little, better, a little bit better. But right now, we are going to keep him at cornerback. And then on the defensive line, Chandler Jones, I think, should be a higher overall. 86 and then 87 overall with confidence. Just feels too low when he's as good as he is. And then uh, Corey Peters, we got to get better from him. 30 years old, normal development. He's only going to get worse. I do like Robert Kimdichie. I'd love to develop him over the course of this thing. Might be difficult, tough to say. And then Marcus Golden, Benson Mayoa, things like that. Need to get better. Rodney Gunter, Olsen Pierre. Need to get better. Special teamers, if you guys care. Andy Lee and Hook'em Horns. Phil Dawson, the former 49er connection here. Uh, in like 2013, they were both on the 49ers. But all right. Let's go ahead and simulate to the end of the first season. I'm going to go ahead and load in. My 2019 draft class, if you guys want to download it, it is on PS4. It's called Bengal 2019 Draft. Check it out.
So obviously didn't make the playoffs. Patriots beat the Saints in the Super Bowl 31-17. And the Rams and the Seahawks eventually ended up tying for the division lead. Rams got it. Seahawks will be in the wild card, I'm sure. We finished 5-11. and Somehow started winning some games there at the end, I guess. But Trey Boston is a free agent. So we're going to look to bring him back. Larry Fitzgerald is down to an 81 overall. I just can't. I just can't do that. So thanks for playing, Larry. But um, this will be the last we see of you. I can't bring back the Elm Buchanan either. These guys, they're just not good enough in overall to age to <laughs> development combo. Although Trey Boston is. Star development, 27 uh, years old, 83 overall. Decent player. Good zone, hit power, speed could be better. But we will sign him to an extension. It's a five-year deal worth a little bit over $22.5 million overall. Very good deal to bring him back. I'm sorry, Larry. There's just no point to bring you back on a bigger contract when we need to get better and younger, and we need to really usher in the new era of Arizona Cardinal players. Would Jason Fred be a part of that? I don't think so. 28 years old, 85 overall. Normal development at this point. Very injury-prone cornerback with all the talent in the world. I am out. And I think I'm out on every single one of these players. Except for Greg the Leg. Greg the Leg has accepted. I guess Phil Dawson retired. Considering he was well into his 40s. We don't have a punter. Might want to look into one of those. Marquette King is available. Let's sign him to a six-year deal. Marquette King is accepted. So we've got a very good special team duo. The offense, not good. 69 overall, it's nice. But it isn't good at all. It really isn't. We need to improve a lot. We're going to have to have a big draft. We pick at number 5 overall. Niners are going to go with Devin White, number 1 overall. Jets followed up with Ed Oliver. Raiders go Nick Bosa. And the Bucks right before us go Jonah Williams. I'm going to go Cleveland Farrell here. Good top three skills. Good combine. Should be a good overall top pick. 81 overall star development. 76 power moves. 86 finesse moves with 83 speed. 83 strength. 87 acceleration. Block shed could be higher in awareness play rec. Tackling's all right. Good pursuit. Very, very good player. We were looking for an edge rusher. And I think we got one. Ooh, Deontay Thompson goes one pick before us. Could have been a player we looked to grab. And I think I have my pick already. I think we're going to take a tight end here. And should we go Irv Smith? We're going to go Irv Smith Jr. 77 overall with star development. One of the best tight ends in the draft. I think he's probably going to go back to Alabama. But he hasn't made that decision yet. So he's got good speed, catching, catching traffic. Route running could be... Better in the deep area, but short and medium, it's pretty great. Run blocking is not that high. But very good replacement there to uh, Jermaine Gresham, in my opinion, as the Lions take Trey Lamar. I don't understand why in every single draft that um, all the quarterbacks fall super late. And I guess Marquise Brown is always on the board. I'm not sure why. Like, he falls. He's a first-round guy. Falls all the way to the third, like, every single time. You know who I'm going to take? We're going to go Jonathan Abram out of Mississippi State. Welcome. 74 overall. Normal development. Could be a bit higher. 91 speed, 83 zone. 76 head power. Not terrible. Might look to start him. Keep Buda Baker at cornerback. I'm not sure yet. Marquise Brown still on the board in round four, dude. I'm not going to pass it up. Not going to pass it up. I know we take him a lot. But I can't pass up with this bad offense. Marquise Hollywood Brown available in the fourth round with superstar development. Only 21 years old. Pretty high overall. His catching numbers are low. But he's a crazy good athlete and playmaker with de a decent route running ability. Like, I have to take that. It's in the fourth round. Like, all day. I have to do that. We'll go Khalil Hodge here. I know he's not amazing in this class. But, um... We do have some depth issues at those positions right now after we lost guys like Dale Buchanan. So even though we're going to be really bad again this year because we just lost so much and we don't have that much to begin with, um, it's a rebuilding process. Obviously, not going to get done in year one. 
And we'll go Rocky to Sin here at a Temple. More cornerback depth. Not that good, but I think it's going to do it for the draft. And I will see you guys in the next one. I'm not out trying. What is What is that? I'll see you in <laughs> the start of the next season. So it was a pretty good draft for us with Cleveland Farrell, Er Smith, Jonathan Abram, and Marquise Brown. Four first-round guys, in my opinion, potentially. Or they have that potential, is what I'm trying to say. Um, will all of them go in the first round? No, probably not. But I think Cleveland Farrell absolutely will. If Er Smith declares, he has a good chance to. Jonathan Abram is kind of a fringe first-round guy. And then Marquise Hollywood Brown, also kind of the same deal. So yeah, I mean, I just couldn't pass on Marquise Brown. There was just no way. Given our current receiving situation, absolutely had to. Absolutely had to. Defensively, we're in a bad spot. Khalil Hodge is a 75 overall outside linebacker. So I think we're going to go ahead and move him over. I didn't, I didn't know we could do that. He does profile better as an outside linebacker, in my opinion. So... Maybe that's part of why I designed him in the way that I did. Um, so that makes the defense at least a little bit better with Hassan Reddick, Khalil Hodge on the outside. Antoine Bethea cannot start again. I know he's regressing a lot. <laughs> it's because he's 35. We're going to just release him. This is the team. It's bad. It really is. 73 offense, 79 defense. We are moving in the right direction. We've got some better pieces in place. Cleveland Farrell, Robert Camdichi is getting a little bit better. Chandler Jones at right end. Of course, Rocky Sin is new. Uh, Buda Baker staying at cornerback. Jonathan Abram will start at strong safety. Trey Boston at free safety. Marquise Hollywood Brown and Irv Smith Jr. Those are the new players. We need to perform. Um, and when I say perform, I don't mean win games. I mean, I need these players to perform so they can get better. The ones that are going to stay in the team for the long haul. Let's simulate to the midseason mark. See how we're doing. Robert Kimdichie is an impending free agent, as is DJ Humphreys. I want to bring both of these guys back. The rest, I don't really care for. I just, I really loved Robert Kimdichie at Ole Miss, and I'm upset that he's not working out. A lot of that is due to his apparent work ethic and off-the-field issues. But he has all the talent in the world. We're just trying to untap that. DJ Humphreys and Robert Kimdichie both resign. They will be Cardinals for the foreseeable future five or so years. Uh, and we are 3-4-1, and one, not even terrible. Not good, obviously, but it could be worse. And we are going to upgrade the team. And, uh, I mean, guys like Marquise Brown with Superstar Development, and they're playing well, already have five skill points. What's happening here? Oh, okay. We did not make the playoffs. We finished 6-9-1. and one. Nice. We will check out the stats from this season. It doesn't matter the uh, the first season. That's why I didn't show it because we just jumped in so late. Rosen was not phenomenal. 32nd in passing yards, 30th in touchdowns. But the same token, uh, we don't have the pieces in place yet. So that's fine. Josh, or excuse me, not Josh. David Rosen now. No, oh, Jesus, David Johnson had a pretty good season. Marquise Brown as well. Christian Kirk with seven touchdowns. Blocking. Not incredible work. Defensively, Hassan Reddick played pretty well. 118 tackles, two picks. Buda Baker kind of in the exact same boat. And then quarterback sacks. Robert Kimdichie had 10. Nine for Chandler Jones. Cleveland Farrell had one and a half. Yikes. Interceptions. Three for Pat Pete led the team. One and a half sacks, dude? No way. No way. See, at least one defensive touchdown. That is P2, Patrick Peterson. NFL MVP is Aaron Rodgers. Doubt we see any Cardinals in here, as we don't. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, doesn't matter, because uh, we're in the NFC. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Matt Ryan. No Cardinals. Defensive Player of the Year is Aaron Donald. No Cardinals. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Justin Herbert. Hollywood Brown at three. Irv Smith at six. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Devin White. Jonathan Abram at five. Rock Yassin at six. Cleveland Farrell is nowhere to be found. I think we're going to go ahead and change the defensive playbook because clearly something is up. Rams beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. I do not want to sign Mike Giraffneck and Glennon. I am going to go into free agency. I am excited for the avail uh, ability to potentially add some players to our team. Yannick Ngakwe is here. Gronk is here. It's one of the first times we've ever seen this. We do have Irv Smith, so I am going to pass. However, 
Michael Brockers could easily play defensive tackle for us, as could Sheldon Rankins. See, why is this here? Why is Damian Harris available in free agency? He was uh, either a first or second round pick, and he just got cut? And now nobody wants it? Well, I do. I'll take a backup running back. We got Damian Harris and Shaq Thompson. It just doesn't make sense why that would be something that happens. A really young, good player with good development. And coming off that season, I know he didn't get a lot of attempts, but over four yards per carry and eight touchdowns? Broke 19 tackles on 83 carries? Like, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. We'll gladly take him to be a backup. Like, where was he? I wish I knew. This is the current team. Have a good offensive line. Not. Let's bring that back. Who misses that? Justin Pugh has regressed to a 72 now at 30 years old. <laughs> and you're going to tell me development or regression is not overpowered because it looks like it. And even he has quick development. Defensively, we are getting better. Someone's moving inside. It's probably going to be Shaq Thompson. So we're going to slide him over right now. It looks a little bit better. Buda Baker's up to an 88. Cleveland Farrell's up to an 86. He just, like, I don't know. Weird season. I don't, I don't really even know what to make of it. And Sheldon Rankins, I guess, has not made a decision just yet. We're going to go back in and try to convince him to come to... Uh, Arizona, the hot desert. Sheldon Rankins has accepted. He will now be an Arizona Cardinal. Defensive line looking really, really solid overall. I was just remarking about, um, to, you know, to myself, this is a really like AAC-themed defense. Or ACC, not American Athletic. Um, American Coastal Conference. Like Trey Boston is, uh, is UNC. We have uh, Cleveland Farrell, Clemson, Sheldon Rankins, Louisville, Chandler Jones is Syracuse. Obviously, some SEC guys, Pat Pete, LSU, Jonathan Aber, Mississippi State, and then two Washington guys with Shaq Thompson and Buda Baker. Robert Kimdichie is uh, Ole Miss, which is SEC as well, but I feel like we don't usually have this many ACC players. NFL draft time. We're picking at number 11 overall. I have... Got it with the mindset that this is going to be a very offensive line heavy draft. LaVisca Chenault's here, though, and I might have to reevaluate. <laughs> as that would be finishing off our receiving core. I'm going to actually just do that. LaVisca Chenault, 78 overall star development out of Colorado. Kind of a uh, an impulse decision, but I think this really makes our receiving core fantastic. It's going to be Hollywood Brown, LaVisca Chenault, and Christian Kirk. That's the three done. We'll have Hollywood Brown in the slot. Chenault at either the one, eventually work up to the one or the two. Hollywood Brown is a ridiculously high overall now. And now we're going to work on offensive line. We're going Alex Leatherwood out of Bama. Welcome to the team star development, 75 overall. This is my first time using this draft class. I believe it's like Thomas 2020. And it actually looks okay from what I've seen. Grant Delpit's in this class, which is great. So I guess we'll be using this one from now on. For 2020 so shout out to that fella let's go matt womack another bama player this time a tackle he looks okay another star development player 74 overall not great at 74 but like star development is good so both of those bama offensive linemen on the right side will start whether it's right guard and right tackle like it says uh for their positions i'm not sure we'll have to see where they fit and we'll finish up with a center Brian Chaffin out of Stanford. Looks okay. He has quick development. 70 overall. Not particularly good, but his attributes are pretty good. So maybe we'll play him? I don't I don't know. Ooh, Mecole Hardman's here in the fourth round. Do I have any offensive linemen scouted? No, let's just go with Mecole Hardman then. He's been great for Georgia. 72 overall quick development. That's what I call a good fourth receiver. And that will be the end of the draft. Good draft for us overall. I think even though we needed to focus on offensive line, we did take two offensive linemen, both with decent development. Uh, both had star. And then I think LaVisca Chenault was just the pick there. We were picking near the top 10 at number 11. We had to make an impact play. And I think we got a really big impact playmaker 
in LaVisca Chenault. And maybe we'll even play him in the slot year one to get him max targets, potentially. A position we really needed to go after, but I neglected, was cornerback as well. There just aren't enough picks in the draft is what it comes down to. Because Rakia Sin in nickel packages starts at CB2. Buda Baker is a slot cornerback. That's where he fits in perfectly. Is there a cornerback in free agency we could get? Jonathan Jones. That is actually perfect. 26 years old, only normal development. But he will come in and fill a need very well for us. Rock Yassin cannot be starting. I think that's maybe part of our issue. We're up to an 85 overall on defense. It's a pretty solid defense. Not amazing, but solid. Patrick Pete is regressing. I hate to see that. And then offensively, we got to figure out where these players fit. I guess this is going to be the offensive line. It's better. It isn't good, but it's better. This will be the team for season number, I guess, three technically. But, of course, the first season we like was just simulating, uh, as a, I guess a lot of this is. But it's a better team. It's not there yet, but it is better. Sheldon Rankins is a new addition, as is Jonathan Jones at CB3 there. it will play CB2 with Buda Baker in the slot and nickel packages, dime, things like that. Jonathan Abram. Defense hasn't changed much, but offensively, the offensive line, a lot of new faces. Leatherwood's going to play left guard. Womack's going to play right tackle. Chafin or Chaffin will play center. And then the receiving core, I think, is as good as it's been. So I am happy about that. Damian Harris is, I forgot, on the team. He plays fullback slash halfback. But uh, let's go ahead and spend some coach XP. Simulate to the midseason mark. I will see you there. Buda Baker is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. We are currently 1-7. and seven. Well, you hate to see that. LaVisca Chenault has three skill points already, though. The team is improving rapidly. I changed all the playbooks around, so I guess they're still learning that, is what we'll say. Buda Baker, Pat Pete, Hassan Reddick, all impending free agents. Would love to bring them all back. All three return Hassan Reddick, Pat Pete, and Buda Baker as we uh, set up for a four win season, maybe. So we didn't make the playoffs. Finishing 4 11 and 1. Not fantastic, but. The team is getting there. 83 overall, 89 defense, 83 offense. It really is about getting the offensive line in a better position. Pugh's got to go. Chaffin has got to go. DJ Humphreys probably needs to be replaced. The receiving core is good. Josh Rosen is developing. Irv Smith is good. Uh, we have a really good group on offense with the, the receivers in the backfield as a whole. Defensively, linebacking core is pretty good. I love the secondary. The secondary is insane. The defensive line is solid for sure. Um, the team's coming along nicely. It's just about progression at this point. But we do need to get better on the offensive line still. It's very, very bad. And potentially this gives you a look into the actual Cardinals because you can't rebuild an offensive line in one draft, clearly in one free agency. Uh, I guess it's pretty obvious. We were going to re-sign Jonathan Jones. Let's give him a four-year deal. Probably worth like 17 overall. And he is going to accept that. The rest, I don't really care to bring back. They're just like death players that aren't really going to matter. And our depth is pretty good. So I'm fine on that front. We're going to go into free agency. And we are going to get the best offensive line possible. McCaffrey's here. I need offensive line, please, anybody. Trent Williams, it's going to have to do. Like, that's solid. David Andrews, going to have to do. Taylor Moten, I, maybe. Taylor Moten rejected. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? I hate it. Now I need to see who outbid me. Because that's all it comes down to. It's whoever offers the most money. Who got Taylor Moten? The Raiders? I offered more than I... Maybe it wasn't. I don't know how we didn't want to become a, a cardinal. Trent Williams is still here. All right. We'll go after Trent. We also got David Andrews and Sidney Jones. I wanted to get Sidney Jones even after re-signing Jonathan Jones. Because I think that would give us a really good group of four. Impact special teams as well. Secondary is good. 
but really David Andrews should change the offensive line group a lot. Leatherwood is fine at left guard. DJ Humphreys and Matt Womack are almost fine at tackle, but DJ Humphreys is going to kick inside to right guard if we get Trent Williams, and all will be right in the world as we advance to the draft. Trent Williams accepts. All right. DJ Humphreys, you're going back to guard. He has uh, some experience playing at that position. Picking at number six overall. I think I loaded in the class. Yep. All right. Well, there's one of the top tackles off the board. What position would I even need? Tackle, maybe. Guard, maybe. But not really. I like the secondary. What would I take here? I think it's going to have to be a linebacker. Jacob Phillips out of LSU. Insane combine. Great top three skills. He should be a good player. 79 overall star development. 87 speed, 89 tackle, 89 hit power. Really, really good player. All right. Welcome to the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. We're on the clock here in round two. What do we want? I don't know. We could go with a tackle. You guys remember Jordan Jefferson at LSU? You guys remember the spike against, uh, I think it was Ole Miss. That was a funny play. What do we even want here? Probably offensive line, right? Just to uh, be safe for the future. It's going to be a Larrick Jackson out of Iowa. Welcome to the team. 75 overall quick development. I don't know where you fit in. You're just not good enough. We're just going to simulate to the end. I don't really know much about the talent at this point. Uh, didn't have enough scouting points. Really wanted to focus in on you know certain key positions. And now the board's kind of wide open and I'm out. Class was uh, pretty good for us. We did a quarterback, which I didn't need. That was like the last thing we needed. We have Josh Rosen. So I guess we needed a backup. Another one? I don't know. Team's looking good. Team's looking solid. Question is, where does everybody fit? I think exactly like this. Took a middle linebacker early. He will play right outside for us. That's going to be perfect. He's going to be a beast. And we are going to win some games this year. I'm excited. I didn't check out the stats, so we're going to do that. As Josh Rosen was better. 4,200 yards, 28 touchdowns, 18 picks. More interceptions, but more yards, so I'm about it. David Johnson had a good year. Receiving LaVisca Chenault, led our team in catches. Although Christian Kirk led our team in yards and touchdowns. Blocking offensive line was better than expected, honestly, despite letting up. I mean, that's a lot of sacks. Hold on. Hold on a minute. That's a lot of sacks. That's double digit from every starter and then some. Okay, well, okay. I should say that a lot of these guys are new, so they weren't letting up sacks with us last year. That's notable to say. Shaq Thompson led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss would be 19 from Chandler Jones. Jesus. Sacks, 9.5 for Kimdichi, 9 from Cleveland Farrell. That's improvement. 6.5 from Sheldon Rankin, 6 for Chandler Jones, 4.5 from Hassan Reddick. And then interceptions, three for a number of players. Patrick Peterson, Trey Boston, Buda Baker. Force fumbles, only two from the entire team. And then at least two defensive touchdowns, Pat Pete and Jonathan Jones. Let's check out awards. That's not what I wanted. I don't want weekly. I guess we can't check out the season. All right. Is what it is because I guess the new season is starting. And uh, we'll get to it. Here we are. I really like it here for season four. The success is going to be uh, interesting. We'll have to see. It's 2021. It's a solid group. The question is, can we come out and perform the way I know we can? Answer? Mm, I don't know. Unlikely. Two and five at the midseason mark. I don't know, man. What are you going to do? simulate to the playoffs probably which we won't make i don't think Ooh, didn't make the playoffs finish seven and nine hey all right i don't know what this voice is but i'm excited about it josh rosen uh great season for him honestly can't hate david johnson touchdowns are down but josh rosen picked him up so that's cool marquise brown great season lavisca chenault was great Christian Kirk, great, respectively. David Johnson had seven receiving touchdowns, so all right. Offensive line performed decent enough. Great season for Shaq Thompson and Jacob Phillips.
But Shaq Thompson, I mean, those are defensive player of the year numbers. That is an amazing season. Also, defensive line got after it. Chandler Jones, 14 and a half sacks. 10 from Sean Rankin, 7 and a half for both Robert Kimdichie and Cleveland Farrell. 6 and a half for Shaq Thompson. Buda Baker, 5 picks. Shaq Thompson, 4, 3 for Pat Pete and Trey Boston. Force fumbles. We, did, we just don't do that, but I don't care, all right? We're getting after the quarterback. We're forcing turnovers with interceptions, and that is money. 24th best offense is not, but defensively, nope, 28th. Okay. Okay. NFL MVP goes to Matt Ryan. Blake Bortles with the Saints. Oh, boy. Where is Josh Rosen? Not in there. NFC Office Player of the Year, Matt Ryan. No Cardinals. Defense Player of the Year is Deion Jones. Shaq Thompson at three. Jacob Phillips at nine. The rookie, Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jafar Armstrong. We get Cole Komet at five. I don't think that is. Cole McDonald at six. who's a backup. I think both these guys might be backup quarterbacks. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jacob Phillips. That's what I'm talking about. He's up to an 89 overall. Xavier Kelly here at number nine. Oh, yeah, David Johnson's a, uh, a free agent now. Are you going to be? I kind of want to bring him back. Chandler Jones is down to an 83 overall. Kind of out. Josh Rosen, Christian Kirk. Well, I'm probably going to let Chandler Jones test. I'm probably going to let David Johnson test free agency at 85 overall. We have Damian Harris. Goodbye. Go go away. So, yeah, going to let these guys test. It's just like the regression at this point. It isn't worth the pain to watch a loved one die, which is what I'm going to relate it to. Free agency time. We need now defensive end, probably. Any offensive lineman I would take. I really would. And then defensively, we need D-end, as I said earlier. And... That's it. Wow, that's it. A pretty good defense. Ooh. Von Miller is here. Sign me up. Am I right? Yeah, okay. Is Timmy Jernigan wearing a grill? I wish I could do... Does he have all gold teeth? Or like a 95-year-old pirate's mouth? What is going on here? Now, I'm looking at it on, a, on Google here. Eh, I don't even know what to say. I think he's just probably like a, like an old pirate, maybe. Um, so, Von Miller is going to be my defensive end. What else is here? Oh, nothing? Okay. Hey, it's Von Miller. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, who would have thought that was going to happen? And <laughs> not me, man. All right, I got it. Shit. No, it didn't save. I, I, I got to go now. Wow, oh, am I right? All right, right end. Now, I know he's old now. Von Miller is. He is 33. But he's also a 93 overall. So his regression won't hurt. And he uh, he offers us a really, really good option at right end. 95 overall at that particular position. Now we head into the draft looking to do one thing and one thing only. And that is upgrade offensive tackle or guard. All right, big at number 14 overall. There goes an 81 overall center to the Packers. All right, what are we doing here? Left guard, right guard. Ooh, looks solid. How's his strength? Pretty good. Is there a better tackle available? There's not. We're going to go with the guard. Luke Sabisky out of Michigan State. 78 overall star development. Uh, he's going to start at right guard over DJ Humphreys. Take Dixon Stevens out of Texas. Hook him horns. Good possession receiver. 75 overall in the second. But that's going to do it for this draft. Like the good top two picks. We're going to sign Rojo. And we will sign Justin Jackson. I don't know. Is I don't know what that was. Anyway, Justin Jackson on the team. Good three running backs set up now. And. Damn, worse at LaVisca Chenault's an 89. 85 offense. 95 defense. LaVisca Chenault, 89. As I said, Irv Smith is only an 84. Hollywood Brown at an 85. Christian Kirk has not been upgraded nearly at all. Normal development kills. Defensively, we have uh, Jacob Phillips here. Star development. 
been great. He's up to an 89 overall. It looks very, very good. And the team is pretty solid. Now, the question is, is Pat Pete is down to an 85. But he's back up to an 86 now. Question is, can we finally go out and win a few games? I hope the answer is yes. There we go. 6-2 and two at the midseason mark. Currently atop the NFC West. And, of course, I'll show the schedule to show that I did not force any wins, although you guys know at this point I don't care enough to do that. Because either way, I will be posting the video regardless of Madden Sim screwing me over or not. But it's nicer to see the wins in the schedule. Is it not? It is. It is. So, we're going to go ahead and upgrade the team here. We got some rookies into the 90s now. And I say rookies, I mean like players we drafted. LaVisca Chenault, Jacob Phillips, obviously not rookies, but 91 overall. LaVisca Chenault, 91 overall. Catching up to Hollywood Brown, although that will never end up fully happening, I'm sure. Sabisky is up to an 80. Womack, 80. Leatherwood at an 82. Offensive line coming together. I will spend the last of my coach XP and then simulate to the playoffs. I'm sure we're going to make them. But saying that, we probably won't. We're going to do the tight end upgrade package since the wide receiving core is uh, already really, really good. And we will advance to the playoffs. Come on, Cardinals. Uh, do we not make the playoffs? Nine and seven. Uh, are you? Are we joking here? We come out of the bye and we just lose five straight? Uh, great. Great stuff. I'll do one more season. All right, we re-signed everybody. Ba got back Ronald Jones and Justin Jackson are back at running backs. Hollywood Brown, Cleveland Farrell, Irv Smith Jr., Jonathan Abram were the big ones, though, and all four have re-signed as well. Also brought back Khalil Hodge as a, you know, special teamer and backup linebacker. So we did that, and now we're going to go to free agency. Not really sure what I'd be interested in bringing in. Again, probably a better offensive lineman. If there, you know, is a stud group, I would bring them in. A fullback, maybe. A star running back to go over Damian Harris. I don't know. We don't have a ton of money. Ah, dang. Some of these players have developed a lot. Draymond Jones, 99. Sheldrick Redwine is at a 99. Ah, dang. There's some good offensive linemen in here, too. I'm going to try to get some cap space. We're going to try and clear some cap. I offered, like, small deals to Sam Mustafer and Jonah Williams, and both of them accepted. This is big because they are very, very good offensive linemen in this class. 96 overall with confidence for Sam Mustafer. 92 for Jonah Williams. Uh, we don't even really need to go to the draft now because there's nothing that I could bring in that's going to impact where the team is, likely. I, don't, I really don't know what it would take. It'd be like an 82 overall tackle would be my best bet. Or... A fullback, really. It'd be a fullback, maybe maybe a safety. Maybe a safety. Picking at number 19, we're only going to take the first round pick here in the 2022 draft. Any good safeties? Mmm, no. No, 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 no. Let's take Tank Blue. He's a power back, and his name is Tank. Superstar Dev, 77 overall. Uh, he's just not going to play. I mean, it'll be like, it'll be RB2. Let me do that. He'll play a little bit. He'll be the po uh, perfect goal line back, maybe. So, uh... Decent. <laughs> Eduardo Bars. What a rap name. Anyway, we're going to simulate to the midseason mark. Check in with the team. This has got to be the one. This has got to be where the team actually comes out and performs. Because otherwise... I don't even know, man. This is the final season... We're going big, or we're going home. And I'm already home, so might as well go big. Four and three. That's currently sitting atop the NFC West after a huge win over the one and six 49ers, who still suck. I'm going to upgrade the team, and then prey on the playoffs. All right, here we go. We didn't make the playoffs again. We finished nine and seven. Wow. All right, well, we've improved at least over the course of this getting up all the way to nine wins it always sucks when they end like this because i mean i built like the best team that i could josh rosen played all right damian harris was good and it's just at the end of the day we couldn't get the wins 
despite having the team. And it's just, it just is disappointing. Is really what it comes down to. It's, it is disappointing when you don't get the, uh, you don't get the wins and you built the powerhouse of a team. As you can see here, 97 offense, 99 defense for a 94 overall. And we win nine games and miss the playoffs. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.